Okay. Uh, now in this video, uh, I'll show you how we normally prove set identities or set embeddings or inclusions. And I'll do it on the following example. Example says, show the following embedding of sets. So we have, we have to show that this set is smaller, so every element of this set is an element of this set too. Normally, normally you have to do just very um, detailed, like a step-by-step -step analysis, what's happening uh, with the left-hand side, and show that in every, pos in every choice, uh, in every possibility, um, yes, in every possibility, uh, the element of the left-hand side will also be the element of the right-hand side. Look at this. The complete uh, analysis will be going like this. If I take an element from the left-hand side, look at this, now I have to just refer back to the definitions of the set operations. And if I do that, uh, the set difference, symmetric set difference, means that x belongs to the left component of a symmetric set difference and it doesn't belong to the right component of a set difference. That's one possibility for the x. Or alternative could be is that x doesn't belong to the this piece, this set, and at the same time it belongs to this one. Now each of these possibilities, this, this possibility or this possibility, we can now just branch out further. So, for instance, this one means that x belongs to either a1 or x belongs to either a2. It's one of these must happen. And this one, at the same time, means that x doesn't belong to b1 and x doesn't belong to b2 at the same time. If x doesn't belong to the unit, it means it doesn't belong to any of them. And the same goes here and for this branching. Again, we have the same condition on x in relation to b1 and b2. And that's complete, complete branching out of, the, of the, this part of my tree, condition tree. The same story goes here. Now you look at this one. This one means that either, either x belongs to b1 or x belongs to b2. And this condition... In, on, on both occasions, it will be that x doesn't belong to a1 and x doesn't belong to a2. And same story goes here. I mean, like uh, this condition applied to the second branch here, it will mean that x doesn't belong to a1 and x doesn't belong to a2. Now we did the complete analysis of this initial assumption that x came from this large symmetric difference. And if you just look at this closely, you will realize that it's just a mm, just combinations of these two prepositions, or or and, in the right way. Now, each of them we can now analyze carefully. Look at this. This one, this this branch, this complete branch. It means that x belongs. To, it, it says x belongs to a one and doesn't belong to b one, doesn't belong to b two. These two together means that x belongs to this set difference. And because the normal set difference is the smaller than the symmetric set difference, it means that x belongs to A1 symmetric B2. And it means that x belongs to the whole piece because it's a union of them. The same goes here. Now, these two together, x belongs to A2 and x doesn't belong to A, doesn't belong to B2, it means that the x is the, in the symmetric difference of A2 and B2. In the regular difference, so in the regular difference, set difference of A2 and B2, and the 4 by implication in the symmetric difference. And again, further by implication, it's in the union now again. So again, these two leads to the conclusion. These two leads to the conclusion that X actually, the first two branches we analyzed, they lead to the conclusion that X belongs to the right hand side. Now, the other two branches, similarly, they will lead to the same conclusion. For instance, the couple of these two things will tell us that x belongs to the uh, set difference of b1 and a1 now, in this order, which means they belong to the symmetric, x belongs to the symmetric difference of a1 and b1, so it belongs here, and thus it belongs here. And the final branch we analyze, 
because of these two conditions. It means that x belongs to the set difference of b2 and a2, which is smaller than the symmetric difference of a2 and b2, and which is smaller than the union of these two symmetric differences. So look at this. We just started from this. We completely branched out all possibilities out of this, and for each possibility we concluded that x belongs to the right-hand side. This is the complete analysis and complete proof of the embedding of two sets. That's something which you have to present when you is when you try to establish or try to prove an embedding of two sets. Now I have a second example which will consider which will introduce two extra concepts in relation to sets, which are called lim in and lim sup of sets. So look at this. We the lim in of a sequence of sets. En is a sequence of sets, I'll just, just make it clear in a second, is the something which is given by this formula. So remember, we start, in this example we start with the sequence of sets, infinite sequence of sets, which all belong to some large set X. And for such a sequence of sets, infinite sequence of sets, we introduce this Lim in concept, which is like this. Actually, as a matter of fact, I just realized that it's a typo. It's supposed to be not limin, but lim sup. Let me just fix this. It's a lim sup. Now, lim in actually is here. Well, it says lim sup, but I'll fix it in a second. So it's a right. So this is a correct definition now for a se uh, series or a sequence of sets uh, which which come from some large common set. Lim sup will be the expression like this and lim inf will be the expression like this. Now what I have here in this example I have a bit of an, of an analysis of what, what it means. I just try to do that. So I'll pick an element from lim I think I meant here lim sup of course. It's just this type of persist across. If I take an element from lim sup from here we can try to analyze what that means. Well, if x belongs to the infinite in the infinite intersection, it means that it belongs to every element here on this intersection. So that's what it said here. This is true. X belongs to lim sup when for every n x belongs to this union. That's what it said here. Now, this union it means that x belongs to one of these e k's, not all of them, not necessarily all of them, but one of them. So if I continue my line of implications, this will mean that for every n, for every n, there will be one of these e k's which holds, which keep, or which has x in it. So there must be a k bigger than n, because k starts here from n, such that x belongs to the e k. Now, if you look at this statement closely you will realize that in a normal language this can be just said like this that x belongs to the soup basically it just means that x belongs to infinitely many representatives of the sequence ek and that's something to remember Lim sup is in fact it's a collection of all elements of this sequence of sets which presented in infinitely many of those. Just said here. No matter how high I take my n, there will be some k beyond this n where for which x will be a member of ek. Now with lim in there is a similar description, and let's just try to see this description. I'll just analyze that. So this this means, now we'll look at this definition. Now, here comes union first. So it means that there is a 1n, just 1n is enough, such that x belongs to this set in, the, in brackets. Now, this set is an intersection, which means x belongs to every element here. So if I just now continue this analysis, it means that there is an n, such that x belongs to ek for every k after this larger than this, this n. How can we say this in a domestic language? 
we can say this in a domestic language that x belongs to the to all e k's after some time or after some point. It doesn't belong to all of the e, e k's, but it will it, it, it does belong to all e k's after some point. So remember this lim in and lim sup. It's two new concepts, two new constructs, based on a sequence of sets, and they basically in an abstract form or a set operation. Uh, it's like a something which is replaces these two sets of points. Sets of points which presented in infinitely many of the case, that's lim sup, and sets of points which are presented in all but finitely many. That's another way to say it. This x belongs in all of e k's, but with the exception of just some finitely many initial e k's, and that will be linked in.